Number 65, integrated concepts. The boiling point of water increases with depth because pressure increases with depth. At what depth will fresh water have a boiling point of 150 degrees Celsius if the surface of the water is at sea level? All right. So uh, basically what we have to understand is we have to understand the concept between uh, vapor pressure and absolute pressure and boiling point. All right. Now you might have seen in some of the prior videos, I was mentioning uh, something along the lines of when the vapor pressure of water equals the atmospheric pressure, we then can find the boiling point of the water. All right. In other words, take a look at the table. It might be a little tiny, but take a look at the table. Hi I'm, I'm highlighting this value. All right. That is in the vapor pressure uh, column. Now, that vapor pressure should look familiar, all right? It, that vapor pressure, 1.01, is basically equal to or the same as atmospheric pressure at sea level, right? You know that atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. So what that means is if the vapor pressure of water is equal to that atmospheric pressure, then we know the temperature that water will boil. It will boil at 100 degrees Celsius. That's what the table helps us determine. Now, I was using the words atmospheric pressure before, which is totally fine. It's totally correct because we were dealing with problems uh, in, in the atmosphere, so to speak, not underwater or anything like that. But I think what might be better is if, and this could be, uh, if you think about it this way, this is, uh, this is a better absolute idea to memorize or to understand. That whenever the vapor pressure of water equals the absolute pressure, then we can find the boiling point. All right? So the reason why I think this is a little better is because absolute pressure incorporates a lot of other ideas. Atmospheric pressure just talks about pressure of, of the air. It doesn't talk about anything else, but absolute pressure takes into account the uh, atmospheric pressure. It might take into account then the pressure of a fluid above you or above a particular location. All right. It's a little more inclusive. So now let's think about this. The... They want us to find the height or the depth, essentially. They want us to find the depth, but you know, I'm going to reframe this in terms of height. They want us to find the height or the depth in which water will have a boiling point of 150 degrees Celsius. What that means, what that means is that as soon as they as soon as they tell me that the boiling point of water is 150 degrees Celsius, I go right to the table and I say, here's 150 degrees Celsius. That means the vapor pressure of water at 150 degrees Celsius would be 4.76 times 10 to the 5, right? So if the vapor pressure of water right, at 150 degrees Celsius is equal to 4.76 times 10 to the 5th, right? And that's the boiling point of water. That also means, and this is in Pascal's, that also means that then this, this number must also be the absolute pressure at that point, okay? So this number here is also the absolute pressure. Absolute pressure. What's going on? There it is. At that point. At what point? At this point down here. I just chose any random point, but below, below sea level here, under the water, all right? So I know that at this particular point, the absolute pressure the absolute pressure here must be uh, four, must be four point seven six times ten to the fifth Pascal. Okay. Now, what do we know about the pressure at this point? Now, remember, 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 remember that there exists a whole the the pressure experienced at this particular point on my picture is a result of some force above it divided by the area over which that force is applied, right? I mean, that's general pressure. Pressure is equal to force over area. So in other words, and you know forces are basically weights, right? The weight of something is in newtons, and you know that that's a force. So what I can think about here is I can think about this, that the pressure at this particular point down there will be a function of the weight or the pressure attributed to this column of water, okay, I'll call this P sub W, let me actually put that in blue, 
we'll say that this is the pressure pressure exhibited by the water and then it is also then a function of the weight aka you know the pressure more or less of the air above it this is the pressure of the air okay now in other words this total amount of pressure will be equal to so 4.76 times 10 to the fifth pascal will be equal to the pressure of the air plus then the pressure of the water. Now, what's the pressure of the air? Well, you know at the, its lowest point, it's atmospheric pressure, right? The whole, the weight of this column divided by the area over which that column, right, is, is applied here is going to be equal to 1.013 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. That's atmospheric pressure. Where is atmospheric pressure measured? It's measured at sea level, right? And then any additional pressure below that is totally attributed to just the water, the weight of the water, essentially. Okay? So what this means now is that I have 4.76, 4.76 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. That will then equal the pressure of the air or atmospheric air, which is 1.013 times 10 to the fifth, plus then the pressure attributed by the water. So when I do the subtraction here, right, what do we get? So let's plug it into the calculator. 4.76 times 10 to the fifth minus then 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. And we get a value now of about 3.75. I'm going to, I'm just going to, 747, I'm going to say, times 10 raised, I think it's the fifth, right? 345, yep. Times 10 to the fifth pascals, pascals. That is equal to now the pressure, the pressure that the water, solely the water, is exhibiting on this particular location at the bottom. Now what you have to do, now that we understand that, you have to now connect the idea of how do I connect pressure of water to a height or a depth of water? This is the integration, right? Going back, you might think about now, oh, wait a minute, didn't I have that pressure, that pressure formula, that pressure is equal to rho GH, right? Oh, right, right, right. So the pressure of water would be equal to the density of that water multiplied by the gravitational acceleration multiplied by then the height of that water, aka the depth, right? So now all I need to do is solve this for uh, the height of the water. So this then becomes H sub W would be equal to the pressure of the water all divided by the density of the water multiplied by gravity, okay? And now I have enough information to solve. So the pressure of that water, as we found, was 3.747 times 10 to the fifth, divided then by the density of the fresh water. That's about 1,000, right? 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. And then uh, now we're going to then multiply that by, what do we have? Uh, the gravitational acceleration of 9.81, or 9.8, whatever you want to use. So we'll take that value, divide it then by 1,000, and then multiply it by 9.8. And we were, it works out to be about 38.2. So the height here of the water, or the depth of the water, is going to be about 38.2, 38.2 meters. So what that means now is that at this particular location, in order to boil the water at this spot, the temperature of that water would need to be 150 degrees Celsius. Why? And think about it this way, there's so much pressure, there's more pressure now pushing down on this point, preventing then the evaporation to occur. I mean, you can think about it that way. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, guys, so thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helps. Please remember to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.